Hi, everybody. It's meteorologist Joe Chaffee. Let's uh, get things underway. We're going to use the RGEM tonight, which is a Canadian short range model. And the reason why I'm going to use this is because this model has been particularly good with situations like this over the last couple of years. It's picked on to trends early uh, with regards to shifts either left or right. And uh, tonight's run with this wave. Now, it, this is tomorrow morning and the front is through when you can pick it out right there and uh, brings back a little bit of rain coming in tomorrow morning and then it moves out and what happens is that another wave develops on that front right along the Carolina coast and you can see by this is by Thursday evening rain is back up to uh, through central New Jersey to about New York City just east of the turnpike pretty much and then just touching the south shore of Long Island and then it continues to bulge northwest by 1 a.m. Uh, the rain has pushed over Long Island and into southern Connecticut. But what happens after that, here's your cold air that's draining down from uh, New England and from upstate New York, and it's draining down into the wave that's beginning to develop here. And as we go through the night, uh, now we're at 4 a.m., it's changed over to snow on this model across Long Island, most of New Jersey except the southeast and all of Connecticut. And then at 12Z, as the wave continues to deepen a little bit more, it bulges that snow back northwestward. Uh, it's a little further northwest than it was on the prior two runs. And actually, you can see the darker shades of blue over eastern Long Island and just offshore. And then at uh, 10 a.m., the snow starts to pull away as the wave begins to move to the northeast. Now, uh, there's a couple of things here. There's, there's the cold air just kind of really collapses uh, after 3 a.m., so it comes in pretty quickly. And this is going to be one of these sort of top-down events and that it's not going to be very cold at the surface, uh, certainly not when you're coming off the 50s to near 60, to, to low 60s today. And then uh, gradually what will happen is, is the cold air is aloft, it starts to snow, uh, the cold air starts to work its way down to the surface, and then, of course, you have all this draining cold air from the north helping it along. So uh, this model is particularly bullish uh, on this run. I mean, given the situation here, this is a small event, um, but it is a nice surprise. And, and, and you can see on the precip that it actually generates a half an inch of liquid now back to New York City and uh, even greater amounts as you go into uh, East Central and Eastern Long Island uh, with amounts uh, well over um, an inch when you get to that point into southeastern New England and then with regards to snow now this is what this model does and, and you can see it actually has two inch snows uh, going back uh, to just about to New York City uh, southeast New York uh, into coastal Connecticut and it's got three inch amounts into central Long Island and an area of four or even five inch amounts being shown uh, over uh, the eastern half of Suffolk County and then gone up to eastern Connecticut. Now, if you want to say this is overdone, you can probably just take these amounts and <clears throat> cut them at least by a third, if not by half, to make up for um, the, the temperature problem that we have. So, I mean, I, I certainly feel pretty good with my forecast right now, which is for, you know, basically a coating to an inch back through these areas, uh, north and west of New York City, and then maybe a couple of inches across Long Island, perhaps a little bit more over eastern Long Island. But yeah, you got to watch these. This, these. These events can be somewhat sneaky uh, sometimes, and you, this is where you wind up getting surprises. Now, let's jump to the GFS for whatever it is going to happen. And I have to tell you, I was somewhat disappointed in what the model did uh, overall um, with regards to the uh, second event. By the way, this is the GFS's projection now because it too is further north and west and it also has, you know, gives out a few inches right along the immediate coast, but the back edge on the GFS doesn't go nearly as far uh, north and west as the RGEM does, but this is coming off the day runs which had nothing. So uh, the GFS is waking up to this idea. Now, with regards to the long range, let's widen out so we can see what's going on and I'm going to put up the surface map and by the way that's at 42 hours so that's at one o'clock in the afternoon when the snow is ending across the area and it's got a deeper wave here off further off further out to the east but 
Um, if it's pinned back like the R gem is and it's a little bit deeper, somebody could wind up with a little bit of a surprise. So let's move this along and you go into the weekend. Now we've been waiting for a lead system to form here off the southeast coast and it does but it's not it, it's nothing like what was being shown in prior runs it's much weaker it takes some moisture here and it runs out to the northeast and part of the issue is that now the gfs instead of trying to um lift this up it, it has much more of a progressive look to this so it's a much weaker system on this run and it goes out now i would have thought that that would have allowed for a, a more room for the second thing to develop but the model just never seems to really get it going. It, it, it actually holds a primary up well to the north and starts to develop a secondary here on Tuesday, which goes up into New England and done. So, I mean, this is a non-event as far as the GFS is concerned. Um, and so I looked at this and I thought, okay, well, what's going on aloft? So we'll go up to the high levels of the atmosphere and back it up a bit. And you can see what happens here is that lead system. And, you know, yesterday you had this system tilting off the southeast coast in, in a negative tilt and lifting up and making itself into a deep storm out in the ocean. And that's not going to happen if this is right. It seems like there's this lead system that's supposed to move up into through uh, eastern Canada. And it kind of, I don't want to say phases, but it just sort of impacts the system by keeping it suppressed rather than lifting it up. So now... That goes by, and you can see how it gets left behind, and then the second system comes down. Now, this is very, still very dynamic at the upper levels of the atmosphere, so I, I don't quite understand why it did what it did, except for the fact that there's so much energy running around, and we've been saying this for the last few days, that um, each model run times everything out differently, so you wind up with these different outcomes. And this one does the same as well. So I don't even know if this is right, to tell you the truth. I mean, I, I, I believe the trough is going to be here, and it's going to be quite deep, but I'm not sure that the outcome that the GFS shows is correct. And you still have this big mammoth ridge that builds up in the western states, and there's that trough that goes by on Wednesday and, and then out. So, I, you know, I, I'm not really sure exactly what is going on here. And by the way, this is the shot of uh, bitter cold air that's going to move up uh, and move in here over the weekend and into, uh, especially up into New England, um, which is going to uh, enjoy some snows out of this when the real cold air comes. And then after that, the pattern kind of relaxes as we go into next week, which is not a big surprise. But you know what? I'm not dealing with that right now. We're just going to have to figure this all out. And I'm sure the European is probably going to come in with something different in terms of its idea. So, None of the, nothing at the time being is really resolved in my view as far as what uh, next week is concerned. You know, there's still a lot of potential here, but you know how it plays out with all this energy running around. Again, every run is going to do something different, so we're just going to keep riding it along, and we'll see what happens. So uh, first things first is what happens tomorrow night and Friday, and we'll see how that plays, and I'll keep you up to date on that. I'm probably going to be focused more on that than I am on this. Um, over the next uh, day or so. Um, I won't ignore this, but I'm just going to pay more attention to the short range until that first snow gets out of the way. I don't like to deal with more than one system at a time. Uh, it just becomes very problematic in terms of trying to keep my head straight. So enjoy your, your uh, Thursday, and let's see what happens Thursday night into Friday. Maybe we'll wind up with a nice surprise here on uh, Friday morning.